Hi, my name is Roger and let's talk about compression. I have received some questions about how, why and especially where you should use a compressor. And I will do a video about that, but that is going to be my next video. So if you don't want to miss that, please subscribe. In this video, we're going to go through what a compressor actually is doing and all the controls that comes with it. I will also show you some good starting points when using a compressor in the end of the video. In my opinion, we use compressors for three reasons. One is to control dynamics, one is to create a sound, and the third is to shape transients. More about that in the next video. Maybe you've heard the expression that a compressor is lowering the loud parts of your audio and raising the quiet parts. That is not entirely accurate, but there is some truth to that myth. The first control I want to talk about is threshold. Imagine we have a waveform and this is the level. And then we set a threshold. This is where we want the compression to start. And all audio above the threshold will be compressed. And all audio below the threshold will be untouched. And because we have compressed the loudest part of our signal, we can raise the overall volume of our track or audio. And that's why there is some truth to that myth how much compression is determined by ratio. Let's imagine that this ugly black block is audio. We have time from left to right and level vertically. Then we set the threshold where we want the compression to start. And let's say that we use a ratio of two. Then all signal, all audio above the threshold will be halved in volume, in level, 50%. If we have a ratio of three, it's one third four, one-fourth, and so on. Take these recorded drums as an example. I've set a rather low threshold, and then I will start at a ratio of one, which is no compression. And then I will raise the ratio, and you can hear how much we compress. When we talk about attack time on a compressor, we talk about the time it takes for the compressor to react after the signal have passed the threshold. So a slower attack time will let more transients through. I show you that now. I have a ratio of 4 to 1, the same threshold as before, and I will raise the attack time and you can hear how much transients we can let through because of the attack time. A quick A and B comparison. First, an attack time at zero, and then at 40 milliseconds. Sometimes you see explanations like fast, medium, and slow attack time, and even on products. What well, that is, I think everyone has their own opinion of. For me, a fast attack time is about five milliseconds or faster. Yes, we're talking five thousands of a second. A medium attack time, maybe five to 30. And above 30 milliseconds, we have a slow attack time. The release is a little bit more complicated to explain and could also be a little bit harder to hear. That is when the signal have passed below the threshold again, how long time does it take for the compressor to stop compressing? Normally, a fast release gives a more pumping result and a long release a more smooth result. That doesn't mean you shouldn't use a fast release. Attack and release works in conjunction with each other and can also shape transients of your sound. I have the same threshold, the same ratio, and I will set an attack time at 15 milliseconds. And then I will start to raise the release time slowly. See if you can hear the difference. Two more controls to talk about. One is knee, and that is how hard or soft the compression will start. If we have a hard knee, the compressor will have an edge and start at full. If it's a soft knee, the compressor will have a smoother start. Then we have gain or makeup. That is where you can compensate for the loss of leveling compression. 
So let's say that we are compressing 4 dBs, then you can raise the gain, make up 3 or 4 dBs and listen at the same level before and after the compression. And that is important because then we can really hear what the compressor is doing. Some compressors don't have all these controls. Some compressors don't even have a threshold. They have a fixed threshold. And then we use the gain into the compressor to adjust where the threshold will be. Some compressors don't have attack and release time. They either have a fixed attack and release or a program dependent attack and release. So the compressor will change attack and release depending on the level that goes into it. I will talk more about how different settings could be good for different purposes in my next video. Now let's set up a compressor and I will show you a quick starting point. Set the controls like this. Open threshold, it will probably say zero, so no compression. A ratio at four, quickest attack and a release at 100 milliseconds. If you don't have numbers on your release knob, medium release will do. And then we start lowering the threshold until we have about 5 or 6 dBs of compression. So we can really hear it. Set the attack time to your liking. If it's transient heavy like drums, probably around 20 or 30 milliseconds. If you want the fingers through in your bass, probably the same. If you want to shape the transient of a singer, maybe 5 milliseconds. And then we set the release time so the compressor releases before the next hit, the next phrase. What those times are, I can't help you with. It's your audio. Then we can go back and adjust the threshold or the ratio how much compression we want. The choices are often a high ratio but only taking the peaks of the signal or a low ratio but have a lower threshold so it compresses more all the time but not compresses so much. This is a good starting point for learning how a compressor works and also shape our own taste because compression is a matter of taste. How much, when to use it, where to use it and so on. One thing though, don't compress every audio track in your mix. It's not gonna be good. Let some instruments, vocals breathe I've received mixes where they have compressed all the audio tracks and it's like all the things are on and I can't hear anything because everything is flat and that's not fun. I hope you found that interesting and hopefully helpful. Check out my next video where I go through how and where to use a compressor. Release have a very funny name in Swedish. It's slep. Slep. Until next time, Roger that.